Okay, the LM393, we have one of those in our parts box, and it's a dual comparator IC. What is a comparator? It's just um, a device that compares two voltages and then uh, presents an output um, based on what it sees. So we have two comparators inside here. We sometimes only need to use one. Uh, it's important to remember if you are just going to use one comparator that you tie the inputs of the other comparator to zero volts so that it's not trying to compare sort of a voltage that's constantly changing um, <clears throat> at its inputs. That'll create a lot of noise and it'll interfere with the operation of the other comparator. The chip will just be going crazy trying to decide, uh, trying to make a comparison to two voltages that aren't that are constantly changing. So you anchor those to zero volts. Um, don't leave them floating where they would just be picking up random noise. But a comparator is always going to be watching two voltages. These would be the inputs of the comparator right here. And it will make a comparison as to which of these two input voltages is greater than the other one. And we'll talk about that as to what happens then. But it'll it'll um, do something to the output as an indication of which one of these is greater. Um, these plus and minus signs do not mean that they are inputs. They are not where you apply power to the chip at all. Um, those are just to distinguish the two inputs one from another. And later on, when we look at op amps, we'll be calling those things uh, maybe an inverting input and a non-inverting input. But for now, we can just understand that there's two inputs whose and whose voltages will be compared, and the and there'll be an indication on the output as to which one of these inputs is greater. And like I said, we only use one comparator for, for, for most of the things to start. You power up the chip here at pins eight and four. So we have our um, a wide range of voltage actually that we can apply there. I think uh, the LM393, anywhere from two to uh, 36 volts is okay on pin eight. And course pin 4 that's your 0 volts so your power supply would be there on pins 8 and 4 and if we are just going to use the one let's make a note here too um, I mean this is our this is our circuit common here and so we're gonna oops down here we're gonna ground both of these you know, it doesn't matter which comparator you use, whichever one's more convenient as far as location in the circuit. Right here, I've tied these two inputs, pin six and five, to ground. So four, five, and six are all grounded. <clears throat> pin eight. So my power supply voltage coming in. Uh, pin seven, not going to use that. And here I have uh, pins one, two, and three that I can use. And in fact, on this. Uh, little drawing that we've got going here of course that'd be pin one then um, this is going to be pin three and this will be pin two just pulling that one comparator out to, to do some work on it as far as the schematic goes okay mm -hmm. all right uh, so let's talk about what the comparator actually does and we won't get real in-depth but um, we have to look at this um, output. So there's actually a little switching mechanism and it is just like an SPST switch and it's perfectly fine to understand it as that. And it's actually a little transistor inside there. It's an NPN transistor. We'll learn transistors more in depth later. But it, you can understand it as SPST switching action that takes the output of the comparator uh, either uh, to ground actually. That switch closes, and it is a transistor switch, but it's the same as if you thought of it as a mechanical switch. The switch actually closes and connects pin one to ground when pin two here, when pin two is greater in voltage than pin three. If pin three, this plus input, if you want to call it that, when pin three is greater, if this voltage is greater, then we have an open here, so the, the transistor's off internally. 
but it'll be an open. So we can make a note of that. Um, I don't know, maybe we could quick quick make a note of that, right? So if, um, what did we say? If the voltage at pin two is greater than the voltage at pin three, then that's when the output goes low. Um, we could say connects, right? Output connects to the circuit common. Okay. So that's one scenario. And, and the comparator is very sensitive, so it doesn't have to be much greater. It can be just millivolts greater. Uh, pin two, if it's even millivolts greater than pin three. Um, but that's the comparator's job. It's making a comparison between the voltage it sees at this pin and the voltage it sees at this pin. And like we said, if pin two or the minus inputs greater, the output goes low, goes to zero. You can kind of remember that association, I think, right? The minus input being greater or winning. If this voltage is greater at this input, you're heading down to zero in the negative direction. Of course, the opposite then hap opposite happens then if the voltage at pin three is greater, if that one wins. Then the output at, at pin one for this chip, the output actually goes, um, it goes open. Okay, now we'd like it if it goes high. Do you have an idea how we can get it to go high? You've seen this, you've done this, you know, if the voltage is at pin three is greater than pin two, this will open. The output though, we'd like to define it. Right now it would be undefined. How can we define it to a high voltage? If you thought of pull up resistor, you're exactly right. And we can use some high value because we don't need, we don't want a lot of current, but there you go, 10K. So or whatever voltage we're using, um, now we have a high at our output instead of an undefined, it's connected to plus V. Do you remember why we can't just connect that right to positive voltage? I mean, you might say, well, if I don't want it to be undefined, I could just take a wire right to there. That's true. You would get a nice defined voltage when this opens. What happens when it closes though? Dead short. So you have to use a resistor to pull it up but the resistor has to be there when this goes to the other state. And when this closes, if pin two is greater, it'll go low and it, you can't have it cause a short. Okay, so now we have, um, well, we can modify this uh, condition here, right? Um, if pin three is greater than pin two, the output will be open, or I can modify that and say, it'll be high, right? I, with a pull-up resistor, <clears throat> so that's what we'll do. All right, uh, let's see. We can use this comparator then to compare some of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, for example, you can use it to monitor um, a sensor in a voltage divider and a reference voltage, right? We could do that. Let's see, where do we want to put them? We've got lots of choices. And by the way, um, I wrote the, the plus input at the top and the minus input at the bottom. It doesn't matter. You could put, I could put, um, I could have drawn it the other way. I could have put the minus input up here and the plus input down here. It's okay. Either way. What have we been fooling around with? We've had this, uh, photo cell right in a voltage divider so we could, we could play around with that get it in a voltage divider of course and uh, I think what we'll say is um, we can power this voltage divider up with three volts one thing you have to know also about the, the comparator chip we should power it up with maybe five volts because if we do power it with five volts, we can put five volts here too. 
um, then our sensor input, our voltages that it's going to compare can be, they shouldn't be with, they, they can't be within um, uh, one and a half volts of what this is powered by. So if we power it with five volts, we could, we can compare voltages up to three and a half volts. That's all in the data sheet for the chip. So those are some little details that I know that I'm just making sure we stay within bounds. This will work out. If we put a little sensor circuit together on the small breadboard, you can power it with three volts. You can power the comparator then um, with five volts. And that'll all work out. It'll, it'll be able to stay in bounds. Um, how do we want this to perform? Um, let's see how we want this. So here, when, when it goes dark, is voltage going to go up or down? Um, Darkness will cause voltage to drop, right? So voltage will decrease when we shadow that. Um, maybe we want, maybe we want to put it up here then. I mean, we got lots of choices. So, I mean, this is, this is part of the game. I could put it here and then when light dims out, the voltage here will drop and, and the, uh, uh, the uh, plus input will drop below the minus input. And so the minus input will be winning and the switch will close and that could turn something on like a lamp. Not directly because the, volt, the current capability of this is very low. It's only like 20 milliamps. So lots of things to consider. Um, lots of things to consider, that's for sure. Maybe we'll do a thing where when it gets dark, um, we could change this around a little bit. I'm just thinking about it. You can think about it too. There's so many choices. Um, look, I could do this. I could take it to the other one um, if I want to. I don't know. I don't want to make it too confusing. I know I'm just trying to start out here. But these are the thoughts you put together. Um, Yeah, let's leave it there. I'm not going to try to keep switching the scenarios on you, but you can see I can take it either place. I, I could, what I was thinking about is I could take this photo cell and I could put it down here. I could exchange the positioning here, right? And that would invert the operation too. So I have choices. I mean, my sensor, my voltage divider uh, output can go here or here. My sensor can go here or here. So I, anyway, I mean, I mean, there's lots of this or that. <laughs> and we can explore some of those. No question about it. And uh, finally, we should have some kind of reference voltage to compare with. I should. I didn't really want this video to get too long. So um, let's do a thing where we have a reference voltage coming from a pot. Okay, I think we have a 5K pot in our parts box. Um, and we should be able to make our reference voltage for the comparators so that it can have something to compare. Um, we could try, we could try powering this with uh, five volts too. But then we might not want we might not want the voltage to be greater than three volts here. So what we really want is a, is a, a variable voltage from zero to three volts. Do you remember how to do that? Yeah. Got to get a fixed resistor in here. And see if you can figure that out. We now can do that with, we have a 5K resistance from here to here. And we want the voltage to vary from zero volts to three volts. So you'll have to think what value fixed resistor you can put here that will take two volts away from the five volts and leave three volts across the pot. Okay, so there's some things for you to work on. I mean, when all said and done, we should be able to get a variable voltage from our potentiometer that varies from zero to three volts. That'd be a good thing. 
And we have this variable voltage coming from our uh, voltage divider with the sensor in it coming in here. And we can take a step back now, see what we would expect this operation to look like. Um, is that output going to go high or low? So let's talk about it. As you put a shadow over that photo cell, its resistance will go up. So it'll get more of the voltage, meaning less voltage here. So this voltage is going to drop. So as, as, dark, as light decreases on the photo cell, voltage will decrease. At some point, this voltage at here will decrease below this voltage whatever you set here and that will connect the output to uh, zero volts it'll drop down the switch will be a transition there so that output we could monitor with a third channel on our oscilloscope yeah so we could do that we could have um Let's see. We could have channel one monitoring that input. We could have channel two monitoring the reference voltage that the comparator is going to compare the sensor voltage with. And we could have channel three. Why not be watching that? That could all work. So let's cook that one up. Let's cook that circuit up. See if you can do it. Um, see what happens. Uh, I mean, mean if you have a preference, I mean, you can you can switch the photo cell here. You know, I mean, remember, or you can switch these inputs. Maybe start with this one so that we're all on the same page. And you can set a level here, and then when you shadow the photo cell, um, at some point. Um, voltage will decrease here this will go low the output will go low so it'll be high it looks like channel three will show high when there's light on the photocell and then as you go darker 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 as soon as you go below the threshold that you set here whatever you set this to as soon as it gets dark enough to push uh, the voltage at pin three channel one's monitoring that as soon as that voltage goes low enough it goes dips below here well, you have it pin two. Pin two will be winning, which means this is winning, which means this will close, which means this will, it'll take this to zero volts. Yeah. So you should see that all happen. That should all play out. You can put your scope in slow scan mode. And um, your scope will show you the threshold that you set with your potentiometer. That'll just be tracking across your scope. Channel one will show you maybe when there's light on the photo cell that you're above the threshold, which means the output will be high. Channel three will show you that. And then as you darken the photo cell, you'll, the scope will show you tracking slowly, put it in slow scan mode, and you'll see the voltage drop, 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 drop. As soon as it goes below channel two, um, the, the threshold voltage on channel two, um, then this input's greater channel three will drop channel three will go to zero it'll go low not quite to zero it's the transistor switch is not quite the same as two pieces of metal coming together so there'll be a, a maybe a tenth of a volt or two tenths or three tenths across these contacts while well, they're semiconductor uh, conduction there so it, it's going to be a couple tenths of volts maybe or one tenth that shows up but it'll be a low maybe a tenth of a volt as opposed to five volts when this is open You'll have a nice high showing up on channel three. Okay, well, that's something to shoot for. It's at least a start. And then from there, we can keep building out circuits using using a comparator. And I think you get the idea. There's just a lot of flexibility. You know, uh, which input do I want to use for what out here, etc. And if we want to, we can switch those. Maybe there's an idea we have for another type of operation. All right, that gets us started anyway.